Hello, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show audio podcast. With your host, Kenneth Pokor. And my special guest today, Miss Kara Clareman, CEO of Plug and Drive. This is episode three, recorded on August the 9th, 2018. All right, well, welcome to this episode of the EV Revolution audio podcast. My name is Kenneth McCor. Thanks for tuning in, whether you're in the car or at home, maybe washing dishes or driving to work or whatever the case may be. Appreciate you taking some time to listen to what I have to say. And uh, as I mentioned off the top of the show, I've got a very special guest today, Kara Clareman, Clareman, CEO of Plug and Drive here in Toronto, Canada. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Ken. Oh, man, am I excited to be coming out here to talk to you. Now, we've our paths have crossed a few times, obviously, since yes. we're, we're all in the EV promotional game and uh, trying to spur adoption into doing what we do. Um, and what I wanted to do today, Claire, on, uh, Claire, on today's show was, um, you know, just tell people what you guys do, what you're all about, because it really is a unique venture that we have here in Toronto um, explain and also talk about the impact that you guys have seen so far. Then we'll get into some other stuff, you know, uh, that might uh, might be of interest and cover your expertise. So, sure. what the heck is Plug and Drive? If people talk, well, look at that. <laughs> thanks, Ken. So, Plug and Drive is an not for profit. We've been around for almost ten years. Ten years. And, wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, hmm. I started Plug and Drive as a project when I was working at Ontario Power Generation, mm-hmm. actually, and uh, took it out as a separate not for profit in. Uh, June of 2011. Yep. So it's been its own company since then. And the whole idea behind Plug and Drive was that there were cars coming out onto the market, but we found that people really didn't know yep. anything about them. And they didn't know uh, the, the critical key environmental and economic benefits that these cars could provide. Yep. And so we, we sort of thought that the key missing piece was some consumer education, which was help people understand the benefit. And mm-hmm. if they understand the benefit, they'd be much more likely to adopt the cars. So that's really most of what Plug and Drive is all about. We've been out there in the community with cars mm-hmm. and chargers mm-hmm. trying to show people mm-hmm. um, with information and with actual butts in seats, try yeah. to get people to see, hey, this is an awesome car. I could, I could totally drive this car. Yep. And uh, in the early days, uh, when there was just the Volt available and then the Nissan Leaf mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the few vehicles on, uh, on the market, you know, people really had a lot mm-hmm. of misconceptions. And right. so the idea was to show them the car and help them understand and mm-hmm. say, hey, this is something you could do. And of course, it has gotten easier and easier yeah. over the years because so many more makes and models, so many more choices, so many uh, more people have heard of it. So mm-hmm. certainly the job's getting easier, but we still find there's an important role for education and we continue to try to fill that gap when uh, you know, the cars are coming out and uh, certainly the automakers are doing a better and better job yep. of, of promoting them. Uh, we need to fill a gap where the consumer is still, hmm, could I really, in my life, could I adopt this car? And so um, about two years ago, we came up with the idea for this EV discovery center. Mm-hmm. Now, now, prior to, to that two years, the stuff that you were doing was pretty groundbreaking, right? There wasn't really a lot of that type of activity going on here, especially in our ne- neck of the woods, right? No, not at all. So, so our goal was, you know, so we're, we were small, sort of lean, not-for-profit. What could we really do to make a difference? I mean, we're not going to make cars. We're not going to sell cars. Right. But what we could do is help connect the consumer to the car. And so, uh, you know, we came up with this model of what we called the EV road show, which mm-hmm. we do still to this day, mm-hmm. which was taking a couple of cars and some chargers out yep. to different communities, everything from big Toronto auto show yep. to small community fairs, you right. know, and we've been all over the province with that. And that's where we, I first met you <laughs> right. was at one of those road right. shows down so in Toronto. We, yeah. we did mm-hmm. them all over and that was yeah. basically, it was a good model, yep. but what we found is that it is quite a slow model in the sense it's oh, yeah. person by person. And, you know, we had, we were collecting numbers, like how many people had we shown the car, how many people have driven the car, and then we could show, okay, how many people actually went and took the next step and and bought the car. And what we found is it's good. It Mm -hmm. raises awareness. Mm -hmm. It does some critical things that we need, but it doesn't create the conversions that you might like to see. And it was very hard to measure the conversions because you, those people walked away and you really had a hard time figuring out, did they ever right. buy the car? So Except you, for anecdotes where they would let us know. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. We did try to 
track people with email addresses, okay. but you were reliant on people getting right. back to you and letting you know. Okay. So uh, a couple of years ago, we thought, wow, wouldn't it be amazing if we could create a one-stop shop mm -hmm. like a dealership, mm -hmm. but then not like a dealership. Mm -hmm. So multi-brand, all the different makes and models in one place, yep. and nobody was trying to sell you anything. Right. So the model of our... No uh, pressure sales. Exactly. That kind of thing. Yep. So the model of our EV road show, mm -hmm. but in a one-stop shop where people knew they're going to come there, the cars are going to be there, available to drive, mm -hmm. and it's just to learn. We mm -hmm. don't want to sell you anything, and you could stay here all day if mm -hmm. you want. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, initially we met quite a bit of resistance to the idea because people thought, well, the dealers are doing that and mm -hmm. what do you really need it for? And um, Dealers really weren't, but you well, know, that so, was the perception. Right, right, that was the perception. <laughs> so what we did is we did yeah. a secret shopper. Ah, and <clears throat> to get the evidence, yeah. you know, because there yeah. were a lot of anecdotes about how... Yeah people's experience at the dealership. Yep. And, um, you know, you heard a lot of people saying, well, I went to the dealer and they didn't have one and yep. then they tried to get me to buy something else. So you you heard those stories, but yep. you were like, okay, I don't want to go on anecdotes. We should yep. have some hard evidence here. Like For maybe sure. that's not true. Maybe that was just a bad, one bad experience. Mm -hmm. And so this was back in 2014. We did a okay. we did this secret shop or yeah. quite extensive of more than a hundred visits, wow. all to EV certified dealerships. So different brands, different, different brands, six different yeah. brands, wow. okay. and uh, uh, urban, mm -hmm. suburban, and rural. So mm -hmm. we tried all different forms of dealerships, mm -hmm. different locations in different cities, yeah. um, and we compiled the evidence, which mm -hmm. showed uh, a, quite a mixed bag mm -hmm. of results. Now, you have to remember, it was early days. There yep. was not as many cars available. But the thing that was uh, quite eye-opening, it wasn't that the dealers were trying to sell them something else. Actually, right. for the most part, the dealers were trying their best mm -hmm. uh, to provide information to consumers that came in specifically mm -hmm. asking about EV. Yep. The big problem was supply. Mm -hmm. A lot of those yes. dealerships, even though they were EV certified, did not have a car on the lot. Right. And what we found was if they had a car on the lot, they were quite fine. Mm -hmm. They tried to sell the car just like they should. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> of course, they want to sell cars. That's their job. Yeah, yeah. Um, what we found is if they didn't have the car, of course, they tried to sell something they have. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> and you couldn't blame a salesperson right. for that. Right. So we thought, well, the problem isn't the dealers at mm -hmm. all. The problem is supply of cars. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, well, this model really helps fill that gap. Mm -hmm. So people could come here to our EV Discovery Center, mm -hmm. learn everything, drive the cars, kind of make up their mm -hmm. mind, mm -hmm. and then just go back to the dealer and order it. Mm -hmm. And we have actually found the dealers have become our great ally in this. Excellent. They they realize they have a gap, yep. you know, because sometimes they... And, and you have to understand, like, because they are investing to be able to sell EV, they mm -hmm. have to put in charging stations, yep. they have to do certain training, yep. they want to sell them. Mm -hmm. But what they'll do is they'll buy one or two mm -hmm. and sell the one and then get another one. So mm -hmm. there's a gap, often mm -hmm. a gap in supply. Right. So they can send their customers over to us. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to steal their customer. No, we no. want them to go back and right. buy. So and get them all up to speed. Yeah. They've done the test drives, there, and then they order the the vehicle because the vehicles often were on on back orders. Yes, correct. So that's still the case now, right? And yeah. so um, to our good fortune, mm -hmm. the, you know, the province saw saw that this was worth supporting, and mm -hmm. they did mm -hmm. support it. Um, and then we also uh, had a quite a variety of corporate supporters as yep. well, including Good. Ontario Power Generation, mm -hmm. including TD Bank, mm -hmm. uh, Bruce Power, Toronto Hydro. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of folks saw that there was a lot of potential mm -hmm. with this mm -hmm. model. And yep. so um, we opened our doors in May of uh, 2017. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were hoping, you know, that people would want to come. We mm -hmm. did some advertising, mm -hmm. but yep. obviously as a not-for-profit, we couldn't do a right. lot. Right. Um, but we did do some, and then word of mouth and other things. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually were blown away by the interest mm -hmm. in this place. We yep. started getting upwards of a 1,000 visitors a month Excellent. once we got going. Yeah. Yeah. And at the end of the one-year mark, mm -hmm. uh, we had mm -hmm. more than 10,000 visitors wow. through the doors. Phenomenal. Gave uh, more than 4,000 test drives. Yes, and I came in like 600 times. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and that was a mixture of just people walking in, yep. mm -hmm. walk-ins, because we were, you know, we're open to the public. Mm -hmm. And then uh, corporate events, yep. uh, 
workshops, yep. meetings hosted here, right. uh, all kind of all miscellaneous, right. uh, you know, visitors yeah, to the yeah. center. So we've been really, really happy with the traffic. Excellent. I mean, your time timing to open was great because 2017 from an Ontario perspective, was a banner year sure in EV was. adoption it sure and growth. Was. And we hope we played yeah. a role in that. I oh, mean, I'm, I'm sure I did. think we did. And yeah. we know incentives make a yeah. difference. But the reality is the incentives weren't enough because right. people didn't understand why they should switch. Right. And that was exactly. the key thing we were helping to provide. So in helping uh, people understand that, the EV Discovery Center here, and that's where we're, we're uh, talking today from, and it's a great center. Um, so you not only have cars on the lot of different manufacturers that people can climb into, touch, feel, take for a drive, ask questions, because your staff is pretty knowledgeable on that's the right. models that are here, you know, pros and cons and right. things like that. Um, and it is important, and I've told folks this all the time, that you know, if you're thinking of, of an EV or any car, you got to at least sit in it. If you can't drive, at right. least sit in it you know, ergonomically. If you're tall, short, whatever, sure. you know, there's going to be, you got you got to factor those things in. So you have the ability to provide that, but you also have some smart people in your staff and, and your displays to talk about the charging because exactly. that's the second thing is, okay, well, you know, do, does the car feel like a go-kart or whatever? Right. No, it feels like a normal car, but with more power. Okay, now that you've crossed that and it's comfortable, but, you know, how am I going to put gas in right. this thing? Right, and is well, this going to be a hassle? This, right. is, this exactly. is a fundamental mm-hmm. issue. Um, once people get over the fact that it's a good car, so in the early days, we had yep. a lot of what you just mentioned about yep. the go-kart. Mm-hmm. We had a lot of people thinking these were going to be low-powered cars, yep. um, mm-hmm. not highway-capable, right. uh, yep. sort of. And it's funny because of those of us who are EV drivers know yep. that EVs actually are more powerful, yep. faster off the mark yep. than a gas car, yep. and, and, and really a better car in pretty much every exactly. way. Exactly. Um, she says, as a true believer, yeah, but yeah. but but I mean that's my experience. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so you know once you cross that bridge, as you say, yeah. people are concerned then about range mm-hmm. and about about uh, how am I going to get this charged up, mm-hmm. and is this going to be difficult for me? Correct. Uh, yeah. And so what we have here at the center is we have you know a charger mm-hmm. uh, zone mm-hmm. where we have many different home chargers on display. Mm-hmm. We have lots of information about how would I charge mm-hmm. in a public place? Mm-hmm. Uh, where are those public chargers? Mm-hmm. Is this going to be a hassle for mm-hmm. me? And also to help people kind of think about their actual driving. Yes. Uh, so we have we try to personalize it. So mm-hmm. you know a lot of people will come in and say, well, what am I going to do? You know when I want to drive across Canada. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we try not to giggle, but we sort of say, do you Mm -hmm. drive across Canada? And the thing is, this is a one-off trip that maybe you might do once in your lifetime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's probably not the thing that should be affecting your decision. Mm -hmm. And so we try to get people to think, what do I do on a daily basis? I drive back and forth to work. I drive back and forth to the in-laws or to soccer or whatever it Mm is. And most of us, not everyone, Mm -hmm. but most of us are driving less than 50 kilometers a day. Mm -hmm. And so for most of us, even Mm -hmm. the the, the smallest EV range, Mm -hmm. it will work for us. Yes, yes. And so many families have two cars Mm -hmm. that when you sort of say, hey, you know, if you're thinking about a one-off trip to Algonquin or one-off trip to New York City or Mm -hmm. whatever it is, think, don't don't build your choice around that one trip. Right. Build your choice around the 98% of what you do. Mm -hmm. And then for that one-off trip, you can rent, take a train, take the other car Mm -hmm. if you're a two-car family. Make a different choice and try to just think about your car not as the solution to every single thing you're going to do. And we found that really helps people to sort of say, you know what? 99 times out of 100, I'm only going back and forth to work. I guess I shouldn't worry mm-hmm. about that one-off trip. And mm-hmm. that's been that's been a, a real lesson to us is that that one-off trip really looms large in it people's does. mind yep. and in their car choice. Well, you know, uh, I will tell the listeners that are uh, listening to this that I have not prepped you at all for what we're talking about today. And you are just basically repeating a lot of the stuff, or I'm repeating what you've been saying, oh, well, uh, good. both We're on of the same us, page. For, for years now since I started doing this. And, and more recently, that's exactly it. You know, people grumble about, you know, I'll pick on the leaf because everybody likes to pick on the leaf, it seems, or a few that, you know, it doesn't have enough range, doesn't have, you know, active right. cooling, so it's going to take you longer to charge. But yeah, for those circumstances, I mean, if you're if you're looking to do a lot of driving every day, if you're looking to go beyond, you know, a rapid charge or, or, or even more than that on a daily basis, then 
A, the Nissan Leaf's probably not the best choice for you, or and B, maybe an EV might not be the best choice right. for you. Or maybe, to remember right. that there are plug-in hybrids. I was going to say, maybe a plug-in is the first this, step. This is yep. the thing, the mm-hmm. middle ground yep. is the thing that people forget. Correct. They think, yep. oh, I drive mm-hmm. too far. And they think, nobody yep. drives too far for a right. plug-in hybrid. They have right. gas on board. Yep. So if you're not quite ready, but you think, oh, I'll do most of my city driving on the 50, 60 kilometer mm-hmm. range that yep. a plug-in hybrid offers, yep. like a Volt, a yep. C-Max, a uh, uh, Mitsubishi Pacifica. Outlander, Pacifica. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then for that big trip, I've got the gas tank. Right. So mm-hmm. that's a great option yep. Yep. for people who aren't quite ready. And we that's actually right. joke around here, it's the gateway drug the for gateway EV. Drug. I like because that. it helps people go. transition yep. it does. to yep. an electric mode, right. but they don't have the fear that they're going to be without right. something out in the world and they're right. going to need need something and they yeah. can't get it. And hi- a hybrids uh, have been extremely valuable because you know the full battery technology is still an up and coming uh, art yes. form. It's still uh, being worked on, just like you know the computer generation. Absolutely. You know now it's dirt cheap. What you have in your watch, you could you right. could launch the, the space shuttle with. Sure. You know, and computing well, that's power. how we know EVs so, prices are going to continue yep. to drop because yep. the price of batteries, which mm-hmm. is the biggest cost in the car Mm -hmm. are continuing to go down, down, down. And we know that over time, like Mm -hmm. they'll be on par with gas cars. I mean, Bloomberg and others are predicting 2023, Mm -hmm. 2024 as sort of the crossover. That whole cost parity. Sort of when we'll hit price parity. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, at that time, we know any of us who've, Mm -hmm. who've, you know, researched Mm -hmm. it and look into it, uh, that EVs will win in mm. that contest because yes. they are superior and yeah. have so few moving parts. There's nothing to fix. Exactly. And so those of us, um, you know, I've I've been driving uh, since 2011. I had a Nissan Leaf, a 2011 Nissan Leaf, uh, which I had. Uh, I still have it, but now um, now it's a secondary car for us. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Uh, to 2017, it was our primary only right. car. We're a right. one car family living in the city. Wow. 120 nice. kilometers of range. Totally fine for mm-hmm. 99% of our yep. trips. The yep. odd time we rented a car, yep. uh, I could rent a car a hundred times and it would mm-hmm. still pay because I was saving so right. much on the fuel. Right. Uh, but what I what I like to say about that is the, the those few moving parts mean I in seven years of EV ownership, mm-hmm. I had to change my wiper blades. $20. There you go. You know, so, so this you, yeah. kind of maintenance mm-hmm. information yeah. is yeah. really still in its early days in yes. terms of data availability, Correct. but we know mm-hmm. that the maintenance numbers are going to yeah. show huge savings for the EV. They are, and that's you know another thing we talk to people about. And, and uh, for listeners who, who are in the EV game, great. You know, congratulations. If you're not, that you're thinking about it. That's another consideration is the low maintenance. It does, there's not zero maintenance per se because no, you know, breaks. You, 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 there's brakes that will work, but they last a lot longer. Last you know, a longer. standard leaf or EV will go 60, 70,000 kilometers on a right. set of brakes because One of the regenerative learned, folk. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The regen braking makes mm-hmm. a big difference in longevity because yeah. you're not using them as much. What we've learned, though, mm-hmm. is that you should get your brakes serviced if you Absolutely. are an EV Correct. owner yes. because uh, my Nissan Leaf, uh, you know, because I was one of the first, mm-hmm. uh, they didn't really know these things right. yet. And what yeah. we've my brakes actually seized. Oh, okay. My yeah. rear brakes seized out of lack of use. Yeah, no, <laughs> so, no I understand completely. So now yeah. they should mm-hmm. be telling you one every one to two yes. years you gotta clean them up because yep. uh, I probably could have uh, extended the life of my yep. brakes quite a bit longer if I had yeah. known that. And and just as a side note, you know, reading my service uh, manual for my, my 2018 leave, that's exactly what they say. Yeah, every two years, they do they've a learned. flush and a, and a check. And <laughs> so excellent. so minimal things like this, tire rotation, that kind of you know get a, get a good pair, of winter, right. set of winter tires for for exactly. the climates that need them and so forth. So again, you know, it's not going to fit a leaf or or an electric car is not going to fit everybody's needs. And that's no, exactly what you said just earlier. Just like every car doesn't identify. fit everybody's that's needs. Right. I mean, that's a yeah. thing to expect yeah. these cars to fit everybody's needs. Yeah. doesn't make sense. That's why right. there are convertibles right. and big trucks and yeah. everything in between. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, and the, the transition to full electric, it, you know, we're, we're a generation kind of away from that, in my opinion. I mean, you know, the wave is, is, is already hit and it's continuing to build. That momentum is there from a consumer transport perspective, you know, and as cost parity and, and economies of scale and all those things sure. occur, I think, you know, the next 30, 40, 50 years are going to see just a tremendous paradigm right. shift in the whole balance of, 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 of cars, you know, ICE vehicles versus EVs. Sure. I mean, there's an article that came out uh, since we're talking about uh, what you do to educate people about dispelling myths about EVs, you know, you mentioned right. before we started recording about that, that uh, article about 
that people, some people in the UK didn't think you could take your EV through a car right. wash. Because, There's a you lot know, of myths. It's like, holy moly, really? <laughs> we, yeah. we just spend our days myth busting. And uh, we myth actually busting, have an, yeah, a like section that. on our website, myth busting for EVs, because uh, yeah. people do have a lot of preconceived notions. They do. And mm-hmm. like I said, originally it was, it's a putt-putt, yeah. uh, some kind of golf cart. Yeah. Now, because of Tesla, yeah. we have the myth that EVs are very expensive. Right. Right. And that's actually a really hard one to mm-hmm. combat. Yep. But what we have, you know, here is to mm-hmm. show, hey, there's the Smart for Two, there's the Nissan yeah. Leaf, there's an e-Golf. These cars yeah. are uh, there's, there's very choice. affordable. Yeah. And so there's cars. And the one thing that seems to really shock people is that we're up to 38 plus makes and models of EV available in Canada alone, mm-hmm. more in the States, yep. more in Europe. Yeah. And, and that so number we includes both plug-in, uh, plug-in and hybrid full and yeah. full electric. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so there's this wide range of options. And yeah. so the the concern that people used to have, which was I drive too far, mm-hmm. or there isn't one that I like, mm-hmm. a brand, mm-hmm. I'm or I'm loyal to a particular yeah. brand, mm-hmm. and people really are. Oh, for sure. Um, they, my brand doesn't have one. Uh, I mean, all those reasons why not are going away. They are, absolutely. Uh, so you definitely are seeing, like, for example, when the e-golf came out, mm-hmm. we had people phoning us day yeah, and night, have I you know. got the e-golf? Have you, they were Great Volkswagen yeah. loyal, yeah, you know? absolutely. And that's what they wanted. Yeah. And so, you know, then you saw a big rush, and then there's the folks, we really want an SUV. Mm-hmm. Then the Outlander came, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, now there's an SUV I mm-hmm. could choose. Mm-hmm. And so slowly, slowly, you know, right. we're busting the myth that right. there isn't, the one that can suit yep. your life, that they're uh, that they're not fast enough, that they're all expensive. All, all these are the key things that yep. we have to persuade people. And of course, as you talked about earlier, you know the growth in, in supporting infrastructure. So right. that's another key uh, potential, you know, uh, deal sure. breaker for people is okay. If I'm going to take just maybe not every uh, long super trips, but if I need to go beyond my daily right. range on a little bit more frequent, what's out there? And you know at least in Ontario and around the world, because we've been reporting on it and I continue to report on it on the show, infrastructure is growing like crazy, it you know, is. in some places faster than others. Right. But, you know, what we what we see today in a charging infrastructure for both, you know, level two and level three that are out there is phenomenally different than it was two, three, four years ago exactly. when you first got your exactly. leaf. Uh, you had to really hunt for oh, something, a place was, to charge. It right? was really <laughs> tough. I That's mean, it. you had to really plan yeah. out. And yeah. now it is so much easier. Plus right. there's, you know, great apps yep. available to yep. help you find them. Exactly. Um, and so what we're seeing, even in the last two years, such an explosion of yep. both level two yep. and level three. And for, mm-hmm. I'm sure your listeners are knowledgeable on this, but those level three are like those quick charge yep. stations for the cars, mm-hmm. both Tesla and everyone else. Non, yeah, CCS um, or yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so we're seeing it's easier and easier. Mm-hmm. So for example, I've been able to get to Montreal, to mm-hmm. Ottawa from Toronto, mm-hmm. to get to Windsor. Mm-hmm. Uh, you yeah. can drive from Toronto to New York City. Yeah. I mean, so it's getting easier and easier. It yeah. would be an exaggeration to say it's solved, right. Um, yeah. but we're getting there. Exactly. And as the technology ramps up over the next 10, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you know, it will get to a point where it'll it'll be closer to a gas station experience. Yes. So by you know, normally we, we run into a gas station, we we pump fill up for five or so minutes, grab a coffee, washroom break, whatever, and sure. then off we go. Typically, if you're wanting to go, that five to ten minute experience. Um, it, it, we're not there yet, obviously, but no. now with you know with ultra charging, ultra fast charging, with cars that will be built in the future that'll be able to handle those type of, of loads right. uh, of charging loads, because you can you can put in 350 sure. kilowatt, but if your car you takes 50, well, that's all yeah. you're going to get. So that whole technology still has to come out right. and get to the market in, in a mass quantity. But you know, in, in 10, 15, 20 years, these type of systems will be there. And I don't know if we actually need to get to that five minute experience because the range will be enough where it'll be adequate for Again, 99.9% of the use cases. So if I have to go and wait an hour somewhere to get 80% back, or 90% of this stuff is charged at home anyway, just like you do your iPhone. So that's the biggest thing. You know, I did an article, uh, one of the shows, uh, a report, sorry, on one of the shows a few episodes ago about the number of charging stations. And in fact, when you compare that to gas stations, um, I think the ratio was like, you know, one for every two EVs on the road versus one for every 25 cars right. on the road or, right. or something like that. People go, what? You're full of crap. <laughs> and I can say that on the air. Uh, I won't get uh, won't get thrown no down. Censorship. But Exactly. <laughs> but the reason is because most people charge at home. So most of those EV cars that are out there and the owners have home-based chargers. 
So that's, you know, your, your, your right. gas station is your home, right? right? Or vice versa. And that's versa. where, you know, when people say, oh, you know, if you have to wait half an hour at a, you yep. know, at a road stop yep. rather than, than 10 minutes, I say, well, 99% of the time, I actually have a better experience. I don't have yeah. to go to a gas station at that's all. Right. I'm plugging in at home and people say, how long does it take? It's about three seconds, click, and I walk into my house, that's you know, it. so, so really, um, in a lot of ways, the mm -hmm. EV experience is a better experience. Yes. It's those one-off trips, mm -hmm. again, that are yeah. the thing that is still Get a fear, little yeah. bit more challenging. Mm -hmm. But for those of us who are doing it, you save so much money uh, mm -hmm. that I think you know it's worth that yeah. little longer stop. I think that's the part that people are still uh, unaware of mm -hmm. is that you know uh, f the price of gas pretty much everywhere is is about five times mm -hmm. more than the price of electricity. Yep. And so well yeah. right mm -hmm. now you're paying somewhere a dollar thirty for gas here in Ontario. Mm -hmm. I'm paying the equivalent of about twenty five cents mm -hmm. a liter uh, yep. when I plug in at night. Yep. And so, you know, I'm willing to wait for that once a year trip, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a half an hour rather than ten minutes. Mm -hmm. And and I'm I'm saving about Two thousand, twenty-two hundred dollars a year, easy yeah. on yeah. fuel alone, and th and this is where I think the the sweet spot is for EV. I mean, of course, we all know it reduces emissions uh, depending on the source of your electricity, right. and here our electricity is really, really clean. Yep. Uh, so you're having like a 90% emission mm -hmm. reduction, but on top of it, you're saving a pile of money. Yeah. And this is wh why I think it, it's such a winner mm -hmm. and that this is another big piece of our education mm -hmm. that we're trying to help people yeah. see you're going to save money and reduce emissions. You don't have to just be someone who's doing it just for the environmental benefit. Absolutely. Uh, again, I haven't prepped you at all. You're reading my mind. We're yeah. both talking exactly the same language and people fail to... to Think about that, you know, I mean, I go on some forums and people are bashing, you know, I, you know, again, I'll pick on the leaf because that seems to be the topic of fun for people that, you know, I can't take long trips because it's going to take because of the throttling. So now my 45 minute charge is a two hour charge. And I'm saying, but 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 look at the money you're saving, though. Is right. it worth that extra time to take a long trip? And you just quantified it by throwing some numbers out there. That's a phenomenal savings over time. Huge. If it's not, then then you're looking at the EVs from a wrong perspective. Then maybe right. they, you know, their choice should be another vehicle or something else. Obviously, but I too feel the same way. I'm willing to stand around and have a coffee and wait another 45 minutes if I have to, because I'm paying a fifth, a sixth, an eighth of the cost of fuel, depending exactly. on you know on where and you are. And for those so. of us who really feel that climate change is a yeah. pressing issue, Correct. I'm willing to to do yeah. that. And and you know. It's hard to find things in your personal life that mm -hmm. you could do that make a difference. And right. we can all look around us, especially this summer, yep. and see basically the planet on fire. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And we think, you know, I'd like to do something. Yeah. And to be honest, I'm I'm taking this step of promoting EVs. But in my personal life, I'm driving yep. EV. And, I, you know, I feel good about doing that. But at the mm -hmm. same time, I'm saving money. So there's, yeah. a, self, there's a self benefit there, too. So, so really, you don't have to be yeah. someone who wants to, you know, go save yeah. the world. But you say, hey, I'm going to reduce emissions and I'm going to save money myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a winner. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's 100 percent correct to my my main motivation for getting to the EV game was not not, you know, originally it was looking at the Model 3, but it was not because of that. It was because I could have a zero emission. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. thinking you know, people say, ah, it's, it, you know, it's too little, it's not going to do much. But I look at the big picture, I think, well, if it's 1% uh, sales right now, and we'll talk about this in a sec, 1% of, of consumer autos are electric. Right. And in, you know, 20 years, maybe it's 3% or something. What kind of impact does that have? Well, I, I think that it'll have a huge impact because you have to look at a broader space That's of time, right. not just with 20 or 30 years, you know, or five years, but what would what would a two percent reduction in consumer transport emissions? How would that impact our environment in seventy five years, in a hundred years, in one hundred fifty, in two hundred years? It's it's those multiple generations that we have to be thinking about That's the right. long term. And future. actually, when you look at the numbers, mm -hmm. the potential for electrified transportation is mm -hmm. humongous it in is. terms of emission reductions. Yep. And in fact, most jurisdictions uh, in North America, transportation mm -hmm. is, if it's not the largest emitting sector, it's the second largest. Sure, next to the industry. And, right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. here in Ontario, it's the largest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of provinces in Canada, it's, it's true. Mm -hmm. And so, 
you know, and here we've already decarbonized our electricity grid. Mm -hmm. So you have this huge opportunity mm -hmm. to take the investment you already made right. in decarbonizing mm -hmm. electricity and putting that into your vehicles mm -hmm. and then decarbonizing that. Right. It's kind of the last mile, if you know yeah, what I mean. You've point. already spent a lot of the money yes. on the decarbonization. You yes. should just use it yep. to decarbonize another sector. It's a great point. And, uh, and so I really feel like this is just a sensible economic decision. Um, in particular here yeah. in Ontario, what I think sometimes gets forgotten is because we are baseload nuclear and hydroelectric, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a lot of our, uh, we have a surplus, a big surplus we of do. electricity mm -hmm. at night. Yep. And that is virtually emission free. I mean, yes. nothing's emission Correct. free, but Correct. it's very low and carbon. You can, and you can argue the merits of nuclear. I've had some comments. Oh, for sure. But, but we have but it, for, right? Have so it, let's and, just and assume our power it's plants there. with the can do systems is yeah. very reliable and That's very, right. very efficient. Yeah. So this is what we have. Uh -huh. And we have this giant surplus at night. And what's been happening over the last many years is we have to dump that electricity mm -hmm. at either zero or a negative price mm -hmm. into the United States, into uh, Quebec, mm -hmm. at a loss every night right. uh, for Ontario. Yeah. And so huh. if we get people plugging in their cars at night, yeah. we're actually doing our province an economic favor. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to lose that money every mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. Even though the price is low for the consumer right. at night, we've got time of use pricing. Yes. So the consumer wins and mm -hmm. the province wins because the province owns the electricity yeah. more or less. Yeah. Uh, so this to me is the, the part of the story that sometimes we forget that it makes sense for the province to encourage people to right. plug in at night right. to avoid that dumping of electricity at night that we are doing uh, right now. 100%. And you know, I, as you know better than I do, I've talked to uh, power people as well in that sector and that you know they said yeah we've got an abundance power we, have, you know, we could get a million cars tomorrow easy and i was in quebec uh at one of the the, the hydro dams for a tour and i asked the guy the same thing he says oh yeah we have like more Lows. than we can you know yeah. we, we got tons so right. it's all clean right you know for, for and them so, so why wouldn't you yeah want to, i mean we all know that if you uh if you fill your car with mm -hmm. gas mm -hmm. that gas comes from somewhere mm -hmm. and most of it comes from far away correct uh whereas the electricity is made right here Good Most point. jurisdictions make it local, That's an and so we point. sort of yeah. say we we shop yeah. local. Right. You should eat local. How about mm -hmm. you should you should drive local. You should take your like you should I take like electricity that. yeah. that's made here. By the way, your neighbors might local. be employed by that. You yeah, know, we'll that's have to local come up jobs. With a slogan, power local or, yeah, or local yeah. or something. Exactly. We'll have to work on that. But you're absolutely right. It's a great point. And for our listeners who are in different areas, you know, I get emails from, and comments from, from Australia and Europe. I mean, check out what's available in your area right. and how it could relate to what we're talking about, because you, you may be surprised to see what your country, your jurisdictions are doing in these elements. Right. And I do um, want to add that mm -hmm. even if you have a coal-based um, electricity grid, yeah. uh, we've looked at the numbers. And even if you know, it's 60% coal or anything like that, yeah. you still get a benefit yes. from driving electric. Mm -hmm. And there's been a lot of controversy around yep. that. People saying, oh, if you're driving in Alberta or if you're driving in Ohio, mm -hmm. you know, it's it doesn't make sense because right. it's an emitting uh, electricity grid. Therefore, you're just mm -hmm. transferring the emissions from mm -hmm. the tailpipe to the smokestack. Mm -hmm. The math says otherwise. The Correct. math says you right. still get an, an environmental improvement. It's you not do. as significant Correct. an improvement as you get here in Ontario, or Quebec, mm -hmm. or BC, or Manitoba. Yep. But you will get an improvement mm -hmm. of about 25 30%, depending on the fuel mix. Right. And so not to assume that because you have some coal plants, mm -hmm that that means EV doesn't make sense from an environmental right. point of view. Yep. And by the way, coal, you know, we all know is a dropping, dropping, mm -hmm. dropping industry. So yep. every year you have that car, it probably gets cleaner. Yep. Uh, you right. know, old plants are coming out yep. and nobody's building new coal plants mm -hmm. these days. So certainly uh, we see EV as having potential even in those jurisdictions mm -hmm. that are coal based. Excellent observation, yeah, because it, it's much easier from a technology to filter those uh, smokestacks right. than it is from thousands of tailpipes, right. you know, that right. are out there. Right. And, and you can you can you can actually do a lot more, uh, better. And I've, I've exactly. talked about some reports on that. So sure, like a, yeah. a giant mm -hmm. coal plant is still more efficient mm -hmm. than a small ICE engine. Yeah. Although yeah. those 
yeah. have gotten a lot more efficient they have. too. They have. But um, we're still in a situation where it makes sense if you can do mm-hmm. it to switch um, yep. because it just gets cleaner every yeah. year. Yeah, I mean, there's energy loss. I mean, I think right. at the end of the day, they're 30% efficient or even exactly. less, you know, versus right. electric. So, you know, we talked about um, the growing market, you know, and in fact, there was a report from Global Data that predicts that by 2040, uh, there'll be 300 million electric cars on the road. And this is more of a consumer-based study, uh, not necessarily sure. tr- uh, uh, industry transportation. Currently, they're estimating globally, there's a global number that there's only about 3 million electric cars, and that's such a tiny amount. And then over the next five years, you know, th- th- there's going to be a lot more uh, strain and margin relief and, and shakeout in that industry, um, including the suppliers and all the food chain there, to really start pushing uh, the EVs. And as we talked earlier, that whole economy is a scale. And, you know, if, if somebody can walk out and look at buying a $25,000 Honda Civic, that'll get them 500 k or a $25,000 EV, fully or fully electric EV, that'll get them four or 500 k uh, And it's about the same from a physical uh, aspect. I mean, why wouldn't I look at right. the EV? Infrastructure exactly. is going to be even better. Zero emission, the clean energy, uh, the, the aspects of the car itself being... You know, that EV grin, when you stomp it, you get all that torque. You're grinning yeah, now because yeah. we all know it, right? All these that benefits. That great pickup. I remember laughing yeah. when I would have my little exactly. Nissan Leaf, which, you know, yeah. hatchback yeah. on the line next to a Porsche or buggy. even a Bugatti. Yeah. And you just, <laughs> boom, you're off the line before them. You have to you have to laugh about that. I but know. Uh, But certainly we see, I mean, look, EV is a worldwide phenomenon. Yep, and, is. you know, certainly we have, you know, we've talked about some, you know, some changes locally here where yeah. where you know there might be a bit of a dip in sales well the reality is yep. nothing is going to stop this thing right. and you know you can just say one word and that's china yeah and china is going i mean Gangbusters. full on yep. ev yep. and most of the automakers let's face it nobody makes cars for canada right, right. i mean they're making cars for china yep. they're making cars for the eu mm-hmm. and and the americans and mm-hmm. we kind of get the you know the cast off mm-hmm. vehicles uh, I mean, so we know this is happening, yep. and you have countries banning gas cars. Yep. Yep. You have uh, automakers committing to mm-hmm. 100% electrified mm-hmm. uh, models. Like Volvo as an example. Yes, and even BMW mm-hmm. and Volkswagen yep. have said, you know, they're some good. of them will be plug-in hybrid, but yeah. they're going to electrify all the makes and models they yeah. make. And they want to kick out you know, like a million of these in the next Millions. three or four years. And so yeah. you're going to mm-hmm. see just a widespread shift, yep. whatever happens mm-hmm. locally, yep. little changes changes yep. in, in local markets. Yep. We're not a big enough market here right. in Canada, uh, and particularly in Ontario, yep. to affect anything exactly. um, other than just our own backyard. Yeah. So the initial, uh, you know, we talked about this before we started, that the incentives that have gone away now, it's probably just a short-term hit because, again, the reality is that the momentum for the EV evolution and revolution has already started That's way right. before these That's came. Right. The incentives are just another uh, another checkbox on a list of wh- reasons to to look at and, and potentially get right. an EV. But as costs come down, you know, automakers are going to see this and start adjusting costs as their you know profitability on EVs tends to get upwards as parts become right. cheaper and like all the economies. Like you said, economies, economies of scale yeah. will happen. So and sure, happen. I mm-hmm. mean, I think it would be. You know, it would be disingenuous to say, oh, yes, sales are going to stay the same here. They won't. I mean, we're going to see a dip. definitely going to be a short term, yeah. Mm -hmm. In the short term, because people, you know, nobody likes to lose what they thought was a big windfall. Uh, On the other hand, though, I'm optimistic it will recover. Yes. And the one thing that I I hope people won't lose sight of is there are actually a lot more used EVs coming out on the Mm -hmm. market. Yes. And as the 2014s and 2015s start coming off Mm -hmm. lease, they're going to be Mm -hmm. more and more available. Yep. And that those got the rebate. Yeah. And so if you are... And depreciated. Right. If you are based mm -hmm. in Ontario... Uh, you know, there's still good deals on EVs to be had. Mm-hmm. And also not to lose sight that there are still some around that will get the rebate until September 10th, which That's is true. mostly Mitsubishi Outlanders. Yes, right. But uh, but there are mm-hmm. a few few others around, kicking around. But yeah. uh, so it's not over. And, uh, you know, we're still open for business. We have no intention of slowing down. In fact, uh, sure. I think Excellent. in a way the province needs us even more. I agree. Now than before. I agree. And, you know, just because government policies change, I mean, you know, look at look at our friends south of the border. Um, you know, even though they have some policies that are, are, are anti-environmental, uh, in fact, that whole movement is growing faster than it's ever That's had right. because of it. And That's I think we'll right. see that same kind of, not necessarily a knee-jerk reaction, but initially and then continue forward on a grander scale because people are realizing that 
you know, look, this is right. it. Right, so, right. Yeah. And I mean, if it if it's about saving money, people yeah. have to uh, uh, become more aware of these facts. But once they are aware that EVs save them money in the yeah. long run, the the challenge is, you know pay now to save later. I right? just, yeah. you know, there is a slight difference in the in the upfront price and people are very focused on that upfront or lease yeah. payment or whatever it is yeah. and not thinking about that weekly That's expenditure right. they're making on gas which actually over time of the life of the car is much more. That's right. Uh, but oh, uh, we is. have to we have to help people see that actually this could make sense for them even without a rebate. They do. Absolutely totally agree with you. All right, well, that's our music starting, so that means that we've hit the end of the show, and this has been, I could just talk with you with hours, Kara. Uh, It's just, it's quite amazing uh, to hear what you have to say, because it really echoes the sentiments, I think, of many, many people. And uh, I thank you for what you do here at Plug and Drive, and of course, wish you all, all guys, all the best of success, and I'll continue to bug you guys and walk in and out of the doors. Love it. And also, we hope people will come visit us here at uh, at the EV Discovery Centre. We're right in North Toronto, and... And certainly open for business. And whether you're a local or you're someone touring from out of town, you know, come by and see us. We, yep. we, uh, we're here just to help the public understand the benefits. And, yep. and we hope that you'll still consider EV as, as an option for you. Absolutely. And there are other of these type of facilities around in the world. So check them out. I know in the UK, there's EV Experience Center, which is very similar. Right. And there are another one in the US. So check them out. And, uh, you know, our time is up. So thank you again very thank much, Kara, for hosting much. me here in this lovely facility as well. Take care and all the best to you. Thank you, Ken. This episode of the EV Revolution Show is sponsored by File Sanctuary. Paying hundreds of dollars a month for the servers running your business? With their high-performance, low-cost cloud servers, you can break out the big guns without breaking the bank. Get started today at filesanctuary.net backslash cloud and save 10% with promo code EVREVSHOW. Show.